Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a little while. After what felt like a very short four months since the release of Like a Dragon Gaiden, Infinite Wealth is finally here, the last of the games that IGG showcased in their Like a Dragon Direct. Despite me being an insane mega fan for the Like a Dragon series ever since lockdown a couple years ago, I did my best to stay away from all of the news and hype surrounding this game, trying my very best to leave all of my expectations behind and experience infinite wealth the same way that I had experienced Yakuza 0, completely blind with as little knowledge as possible. Now, I tried my best to stream my first impressions, however, issues from both my brain not working with different time zones, varying all the way over to my PC doing this basically meant that I couldn't stream this game. And by couldn't stream this game, I mean that I really wasn't bothered to problem solve, and I ended up just recording all of my footage and playing it on my own without having to worry about streaming. And honestly, I probably should have just done that from the start. It's a great way to experience these types of games. Just so you know, this video will talk about what I ran into in my time playing, during which I reached the end of the second chapter, and I'll make sure that I put in some potential spoiler warnings on the screen for those of you who wanted to experience the game in the same way as me, but are still looking for some kind of opinion on it. So let's not beat around the bush anymore and dive straight into what to expect from Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. So despite my best efforts, there were a couple of things that I had already known before starting the game that I feel need to be talked about. Firstly, there's this whole New Game Plus ordeal. Now, to me personally, it doesn't really matter whether RGG or Sega had decided to do this, but the fact of the matter remains that the New Game Plus mode is locked behind a paywall. Specifically, the Master Vacation Bundle, which will cost you 32 Aussie dollary dues if you don't purchase the Deluxe Edition off the rip. This is, in my opinion, one of the single worst things a company can do to their player base. This isn't the same as just releasing day one DLC that gives you some bonus content or a cherry on top, maybe a couple skins. No, this is removing a core and staple feature of the entire series and demanding you pay extra if you so much as want the choice of being able to play through it one more time with all of your hard earned gear and levels. At one point, people even had concerns about not being able to 100% the game without the Master Vacation Bundle, but at least on some platforms, these are DLC achievements. I'm not entirely too sure if the same goes for Steam, since I do own the Master Vacation bundle and I can't see a clear way to differentiate the DLC achievements from the base achievements, so just keep that in mind and maybe ask other players on Steam who know the answer better than me. But the problem doesn't just stop with this one single paywall, there's also a borderline predatory amount of absolutely needless DLC content that you can get with the game, with the total cart size coming in at just under 250 Australian dollars, most of which being several variations of I want to skip all of the grinding in my heavily JRPG inspired game types of packages. Essentially, people just pay money so that way that they can avoid the grind. It's really disgusting when you compare it to the past installments of the series having barely any DLC at all. Unfortunately, it seems like this is going to be a trend with the Like a Dragon series going forward as the same kind of issues were rose in my brain during Ishin with some of its uh, upgrades and whatnot. The packs that you could buy from Steam. Look, I don't know. I'm not looking at the page right now. I'm reading the script. All right. Point is that everybody and their battle bomb has heard of this and probably has the same opinion as me on this issue. In short, it's a dog move and I'm really not a fan of it. But let's, let's move away from the issue of money for the moment and actually talk about the game itself, and we'll start with something positive, the gameplay. As I previously stated in a slightly mocking voice, Infinite Wealth is heavily JRPG inspired, using the turn-based combat system from 7 with a couple of tweaks. So if you've played 7, a lot of what you'll see and play with will look very similar to you. Same old numbers, HP, MP, XP, damage elements, it's just the same. But there are some really big changes. The biggest of which would be this little ring on the ground. Basically, within this ring you can move your character around to better position yourself for attacks or skills. This gives you more control over which the angle of your attacks hit and can lead to some really cool combos. Having this little bit of extra control gives you quite a big impact on the area of effective abilities, allowing you to hit more people with Numbers Fire Breath or line up more people for Ichiban's Charge skill. Not to mention being able to do more damage by being closer to your enemies, gaining a proximity bonus, or even from behind attacking them in the back. Even if we were to just leave it at that, it's still a very cool way to switch up the combat and adds a new level of depth to the gameplay that increases your effectiveness and makes you look for big openings or a specific setup in a fight. This also leads into the introduction of some new mechanics to the turn-based combat style, such as being able to pick up weapons from the ground in a classic beast style fashion. 
These weapon attacks also can have elemental effects, such as picking up a burner to do fire damage, or I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what this is in this clip, but it does water damage, so take what you can get. Taking note of where these weapon attacks can be launched from will be pretty handy when fighting enemies that you otherwise might not have the best team against, finding elemental weaknesses against certain enemies that you just simply don't have the skills for in your party. Not only this, but enemies can also be knocked backwards into terrain, other enemies, or even your own allies to do an extra little follow-up hit, leading to moments where a single basic attack can clean up a couple of low health enemies or take out a large one, meaning that you have to waste less MP on guys with slivers of health tinier than your average scam caller's patience. Other than that, there also seems to be a support character system as well, though I can't tell you for sure how much this is used or if it's just a story mission thing or not, since this did happen right at the end of chapter two. So yes, very similar gameplay with a few tweaks just to make it more interesting to play and more beneficial for you to micro fights rather than just hitting the auto button. Okay, tangent time. This next thing that I noticed isn't really even that important, but I mean, it's my video, so too bad. Infinite Wealth has swimming in it now as well, which if I'm being completely honest, looks a little bit weird and janky to me, and I know exactly why. You see, RGG is an absolute master at reusing any and all assets that they have available to them. Despite me not being able to really recall any point in a Like a Dragon series where you actually swim while controlling the character, I could be very wrong about this, correct me if I am but I can guarantee you that these animations are indeed reused. You see, the very first game that RGG Studios had developed since its founding was actually Binary Domain, which I did my own video on a while back. And yes, Binary Domain does have a swimming segment in it. And no, it was not very fun. I'm just hoping that these very similar swimming animations and similar, similar looking, eh, I'm just hoping that these very similar swimming animations and similar looking waves in the water don't mean anything for the remaining chapters that I have yet to play through. Please, RGG, I beg you, good swimming, please, please, don't make it janky. Okay, if gameplay is the only thing that you look at when playing a Like a Dragon game, then you clearly haven't played any Like a Dragon games before. In terms of the story, Infinite Wealth absolutely does not disappoint. Infinite Wealth story within the first couple of chapters serves as a fantastic world building on what's happened since the dissolution of the Tojo and the Omi, covering Ichiban and his party's role in the aftermath, where they end up after the time skip, and how Ichi carries on Arakawa's wish of giving all of the ex-Yakuza a place in the world as normal civilians, and a way out of organised crime. The way that the game portrays these advancements in the characters' lives and how they've grown as people works fantastically, in particular with Ichiban, whose kind-hearted nature leads him to giving out help to any ex-Yakuza who asks for it, so long as that they are truthful and honest about their past. It's a very heartwarming start to the story, showing a lot of pride in where the characters have ended up in life. I'll leave out the details for the moment, but I am absolutely in love with the story so far, especially with the setup leading into what I'm certain will be the main plot points. There are also a few returning characters that make their comeback in the series, filling in some gaps in the history of others, and answering some questions about Ichiban that were kind of swept under the rug in 7. I mean, if you know, you know. But I personally have some great expectations for where the story will go and can really tell there's a lot of delicate writing that's gone into the storyline for Infinite Wealth. And ultimately, I just really love how Ichiban's storylines are much less stoic and heroic than Kiryu's past games. It makes Ichiban feel more human, more real, and that's just the exact feeling that I got when I played through Yakuza 7 for the first time. So I've got high hopes right now about the story. I am absolutely loving Infinite Wealth right now. Every part of it seems to just have so much care and dedication going into it, except for the store page, but I mean, we move. Although certain areas do feel a little unpolished, specifically the continuity in some of the combat animations, like teleporting into an enemy when doing a weapon attack, it just feels a little bit weird and off, but I can look past that. In a similar sense, I'll try to look past the swimming animations, although there have been two parts of the game that have swimming involved. So hopefully, I, ju I just hope that I don't have to swim around in a story mission. I really don't want to do that. I also find it a little bit interesting that I decided to reuse animations from a game that's a decade, oh my God, binary domain was a decade ago. Okay, now to answer my question. Do I recommend buying Infinite Wealth based on my first six hours of gameplay? Well, as a game, yes. I feel like Infinite Wealth has the potential to top seven for its storyline and even top the entire series as a game, just in general. 
But it's also very difficult to ignore the monetary issues, especially with the DLC and the New Game Plus, whether or not Sega or RGG is responsible for deciding what base game features slowly get stripped out and added as ransom behind a paywall. It kind of makes it really difficult to justify spending an exorbitant amount of money on it. Because at the end of the day, that's exactly what corporations and executives are looking for. They want your money. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you have the money and you really want to play this game, absolutely go for it. You won't regret buying and playing it. But there's also just no better way to show your opinion to corporate executives than holding back your hard earned cash from them. Just be careful with how you spend your money and make sure that you're well aware that if you purchase stuff like this and you buy the New Game Plus DLC, then it'll just show to the corporate executives that they can get away with it and make some extra money. So yeah, keep that in mind. I mean, I don't blame you if you still buy the game. I, I fucking bought it. How else do you think I got the footage, bro? I bought it three months before as a pre-order. Anyway, that's about as much of a spoiler-free review that I can give you. Um, but if you want more proof that Infinite Wealth is going to be a great game, just look at fucking Metacritic, bro. They rolled in with 91 before release. 24 hours before release from Critic Reviews. 91. Keep that in mind. Anyway. I know that this video doesn't actually have that much substance to it, but I mean, hey, I really only had two days to make this before my upload time, so you'll take what you can get. Also, I've been doing a lot of these Lethal Company clip videos and was wondering what people would like to see more of. These types of heavily scripted videos, some quick highlights from random footage and streams, or maybe something in between? Either way, that's me done for this week. If this video is any longer, then I won't be able to play more Infinite Wealth. So yeah, make sure you subscribe, go do like stuff, I don't know. This part of the outro is not scripted at all.